be something else. He will be available today to talk uh, and get into what the NCAA has uh, now released when it comes to Baylor Athletics over the sexual assault scandal, over the uh, staff with uh, Art Browse as the head coach. And we know all of the story for the last five or six years. Really, this story began, if you think about it, in August of 2015 with the Sam Kawachu trial and the verdict and has been going on forever. We asked, why is it taking so long? Paul Catalina, Craig Smoke, and David Smoke, and 254 uh, 339 Paul, in the end, scale of 1 to 10 for Baylor Athletics, it's a surreal day. It's a surreal day, but how would you put today the penalties imposed by the NCAA on a scale of 1 to 10? About a 2. I mean, it's, it's not uh, anything, uh, I mean, it's a mosquito bite. Uh, and they could not do like the world wanted them to give them a 10. I mean, that's what the, the, the people wanted. And there's no denying. And the report states as much that everything that went on at Baylor was, was egregious and out of control. And they had a huge campus wide problem, but what the NCAA can do is not punish that. What they can punish is impermissible benefits. So there were no impermissible benefits when it came to the adjudication of sexual assault because that was the same for every student. There was one impermissible benefit that was a, a student athlete, football player, cheated on a quiz, and he was already under some sort of probationary thing from the university president and his uh, that was violated and a coach knew about it or a, a, a staffer knew about it and that was the impermissible benefit. And they had some recruiting level things go on because of a, the Baylor Bruins, uh, mostly female um, group that was used for recruiting and it's not supposed to be. So that's what happened here. And yes, the, the meat on the bone that everybody wanted was the sexual assault things, but that's not what the NCAA does. And after North Carolina, which is an academic scandal with impermissible benefits were allowed to the entire student body, the same thing happened at Baylor. And then Penn State, which we saw, this was inevitable that the, it was going to happen with the NCAA. I have to say, and Craig Smoke uh, uh, is with us as well, as always, at 3-6. to six, uh, I thought that the, the NCAA, with very much of their teeth been ripped out in recent years, might have one more Hail Mary just to let everyone know. And I walked in today before 11 o'clock when they were about to release the information. Paul said, this is a nothing burger and then kind of went over it with us. We're going to give you the penalties in a minute, but Craig Smoke here, your thoughts, this has been a five- or six-year deal. Uh, overall, it appears as if, yes, there are penalties. Yes, it will affect recruiting in a way based on visits, et cetera. But in the end, this could have been so much more. And to me, Baylor can now today, in a surreal way, clean it, move on, and go forward. Yeah, I mean, this has been six years in the making. I think I saw where, uh, you know, one of the authors of that Texas Monthly piece, which you remember vividly that coming out, uh, said that uh, next week, I think, marks the six-year anniversary. So it's uh, not surprising that it's been that long, but also it, it kind of is surprising that it's been that long. Um, I'm sure the people over on campus today are feeling an overwhelming sense of relief uh, just to have some closure, uh, to have some finality to something that has been going on now for, for a very long time. Uh, you know, I do feel for, for those uh, young ladies involved in this because this is not a uh, NCAA decision saying like, hey, nothing at all happened, like nothing happened at all. No, some stuff very much happened. It's just that like we tried to tell people, I mean, two, three, four, five years ago, the one thing that I always questioned about the NCAA's involvement in this is how are they going to get into the legalities of this? Because that is not their jurisdiction and not what they are supposed to be dabbling in. And this entire case was legalities and hearsay and he said, she said. And that's all that it was. So it, it was always puzzling to me that unless there was like some smoking gun of like, here's a handout of like $100,000 to a recruit, I just didn't know what the NCAA was going to actually penalize because, you know, outside of somebody on the assistant coaching staff being involved, and we didn't have all the information at the time, I just didn't know strictly from the cases themselves how that was going to be in the NCAA's territory when it was clearly more of a courtroom thing uh, as, as that has played out. So uh, I'm not shocked. I am a little bit surprised. I thought that there was a good chance that, you know, maybe they tried to make an example of Baylor. 
Uh, we've seen them try to do that in the past, and, and maybe they've just swung and missed so many times in trying to do that to other institutions that they kind of realize maybe who they are now and, and uh, you know, didn't feel the need to have to go hellfire and brimstone to try and make a point. Now, obviously, a lot of people would have loved for them to have done that, um, and that would have led, I'm sure, to some response from Baylor, but that's not going to happen. I mean, it's out. It's done. Baylor's had their response now. Linda Livingstone's talked. Mac Rhodes has talked. So, yeah, just an overwhelming sense of relief, I'm sure, for them. I do, uh, you know, still wish for the best for, for the young ladies and anybody that was, uh, you know, involved in any of the wrongdoings during this process. That cannot be forgotten. Uh, but there's a lot of people on campus today that had absolutely nothing to do with that uh, in any way, shape, or form, including everybody in leadership, including everybody in charge of the football team. So, um, I don't think they should have been punished. And, and I know that's a problem that some people have with this, is that it took so long that you couldn't really punish those who were around for it. But well, that means you would have had to react pretty much yeah, within six or eight months. Yeah, yeah, and this was something that clearly had to play out a little bit. So, you know, obviously a very complicated story. It wasn't as black and white as a lot of people tried to make it out to be. And it wasn't as clear cut as a lot of people tried to portray it early on. Uh, but, you know, ultimately... Uh, you know, like I said, I'm sure there's relief over there, and, and now people, as best they can, can move on. All right, the chat room is open. Uh, Nick is always one of the first out of the box, um, and, and we'll, we'll get to that as well. Now, here is what the penalties are. Here is a graphic that does show you the penalties of Baylor football that the NCAA came out with uh, today. Armstrong, do you have that graphic? Here we go. All right, Paul. Four years of probation, a $5,000 fine. Uh, several oh, hold on. Yeah. Four years of probation. What that means is that they will be under, obviously, a four-year probationary period where, hey, you need to watch your P's and Q's, which Baylor's doing, it appears, and that if anything else flares up during this four-year period of time, this, of course, could then be magnified and or changed. Yeah, a $5,000 fine. A reduction to 30 official football visits this academic year. Three a weeks. lot of the officials have already been made. Most of them have already been taken. Yeah. Uh, this rec you know, football recruiting during the year two-week ban, a lot of these are uh, recruiting things. The, a reduction of football evaluation days by three during fall 2021, which I, I guess is – that's practice, right, guys? Football evaluation is practice. I don't practice. know. I, I don't know. We can, yeah. No. Uh, and 10 uh, during spring 2022, a five-year show cause order for the former assistant director of football operations. Now, we there was a question about this, and Mac Rhodes today answered it. There were some reporters who uh, wanted to throw a name out there, and Colin Schillinglaw, whose name had been brought up in a couple of text messages and some of the reporting during the last five years, and he was asked, is this Colin Schillinglaw – and he said, I can tell you who it's not, and it's not Colin Schillinglaw. And then someone, uh, Tommy Witherspoon of the newspaper, asked if it's former Baylor quarterback Odell James, and Mac Rhodes said he could not comment on that, and so you can make the decision yourself. Yes, and a vacation of all records in which student-athletes competed while ineligible. The university must provide a written report containing the contest impacted the NCAA media coordination and statistics staff within 14 days of the public release of the decision. The, uh, according to Mac Rhodes on the Zoom, it was in 2011. Uh, it's five wins. Vacated. Vacated. Uh, and that would be it. And I, and I think so that our, one will So Robert Griffin the third and them were 10-3 and three that year, correct? So now they're 5-3. and three. Yeah. So that's doesn't what that change was. that he won the Heisman. Doesn't change we know of as far as the Alamo Bowl. A couple of things I thought could be caught up in this, Craig, and it's one of the things I just thought of was that would there be a possibility they vacated those Big Twelve titles? Neither one of them are going to be vacated. In fact, in a lot of ways, if you look at this based on the NCAA's jurisdiction, um, Baylor has already been on probation for about five years, but none of what was thought of the death penalty. Uh, Art Briles show cause. We're going to get into that. Not a part of it. There were some damning words, and we'll get into that in a second. There is no bowl ban. There's no loss of scholarships. And so those things are not a part of the penalties for Baylor football. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, just in terms of, you know, taking any feelings out of it or any of that and just looking squarely at uh, the penalties that you mentioned, uh, they couldn't have, you know, wound up in a better spot. They, I mean, truly, yeah, I was expecting something, uh, even if the NCAA investigation didn't have much teeth to it. Uh, regardless, I was still expecting them to, you know, 
throw something out there that would be hurtful uh, right away, which would be involving recruiting, which would be involving vacating championships, which would be, you know, uh, bowl bans. But the fact that they got none of that, basically, um, I'm shocked. I mean, I really am shocked. And, and I know there were a lot of people who, as this thing drug out, were confident that the longer it drug out, the, the lesser the punishment would be. Because at, at some point, I mean, again, next week marks six years, six years since that article that, blew, you know, blew the whole thing up came out. Um, you know, I, I just figured something was going to be in play, you know, scholarship productions or, or just something. And I'm shocked. I mean, I really am. I, I, I did not expect them to get the death penalty. I always thought that that talk was just completely absurd and a lot of hyperbole by people who were doing wishful thinking on social media. Uh, but I did think there was going to be something. And yeah, technically there is. But in terms of college football fans and the things that to you would be the absolute worst case scenario, None of that happened. Yeah, I mean, I, none of that happened. Yeah, and Craig, I, I, I just, I, uh, I was not shocked. I mean, I thought. I mean, I'm saying for five years that like nothing's going to happen. Well, I mean, I thought there was going to be something, yeah, I Paul. Not, like, yeah. I mean, a bowl ban or a couple of scholarships taken away, or I mean, just a thing. And there was nothing. I mean, in terms of those areas, it was far more the, hey, don't do anything again in the next five years or, you know, that probation stuff. I mean, that's really what this is boiled down to. So, I mean, kudos to you for not thinking anything yeah. was going to happen all along. But uh, like I said, I, I was expecting, you know, just one of those areas to, to have been addressed to just have the NCAA say, see, we did something. And yeah. they still did something. But obviously it's not what opposing yeah. fans wanted to see. And, and it's, uh, it's exactly what Baylor and, wanted to see. And the only penalty that they are getting – Based on it was happened uh, eleven years ago, yeah, or ten or eleven years ago. So yeah, ten, yeah, talking ten years ago. That's when that happened. So uh, it's uh, this was this was a day that like ends ends a saga for Baylor and the NCAA, and it's been going on a long, long time. Uh, and I, I, I just think it kind of shows the absolute need. Also, like the. One of the things we kept hearing, and what you'll hear from the Committee on Infractions in a little bit, we've got a three-minute clip to play from them, but it shows the need for the NCAA to reassess their governance and rewrite their constitution, a committee that Linda Livingstone is on, and it's because they said, look, we would, you know, we, we'd we like to make recommendations that institutions have different policies compared to this, that the NCAA can do something about it, but in the bylaws of the NCAA, the most egregious things that happened at Baylor, they can do nothing about. Right. That's that's what people need to take away from this. If this is not Baylor's not saying they didn't do anything wrong. They're very much leaning into it and saying yes they, that they did. Uh, the uh, the NCAA is not saying that Baylor didn't do anything wrong. The NCAA is not saying that these things were not egregious and that they're terrible. What they're saying is yes, that's all that, but this is not what the NCAA does, and it's good that they don't. I mean, that's not what they should be doing, right. but there needs to be a new governance structure so people can understand that. Or if there are some sort of penalties that come out of widespread problems when you have sexual assault or drugs or whatever going on in your program, if the NCAA can do something with some actual teeth to it that matters, then they need to figure that out. Well, but I mean, I don't think they can. No, I don't think they can either. And I'm in agreement with you. There needs to be some, you know, jurisdiction on the part of the schools and the NCAA or, you know, and this is partly why Greg Sankey has been, you know, blowing the horn of, of just not being a fan of the NCAA and wanting to move away from it because one of his biggest critiques was the just messed up uh, process of investigations and, and how long they take. And at the end, it's all of this for basically nothing. Uh, you know, more than not, uh, and they just drag it out and there's no real clarity on what actually is taking place and you're not sure like what you might, you know what I mean? Like there's just too much uncertainty involved with the whole thing to the point where it just doesn't even make a lot of sense other than just when you get in trouble, the NCAA is the one that punishes you. And, and like outside yeah. of that, it's like it's totally gray. And it doesn't need to be that gray when you're talking about matters like this. So I'm with Sankey. I mean, I, mean, they, I know they're going to have their big meeting or whatever, and they're going to figure some things out that they should have been figuring out for the last 10 years. Well, it's too little too late for that, I think. And uh, I think today we'll just probably – uh, push forward further change as far as the governance of you know the NCAA and uh, and college football or college sports, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm just 
surprise. You know, it's like you're waiting on it, waiting on it, waiting on it for it to finally happen. And then today it just dropped out of nowhere. Like, you know, just complete surprise. So, you know, uh, again, uh, I'm glad that it's over uh, personally because this has been something that's been going on for, for quite a while. Uh, but, you know, obviously there's some things that Baylor uh, has had to look in the mirror over and will ne need to continue to look in the mirror over and remember and uh, and make sure it never happens again and all that. Uh, I think the new leadership has come in that have done a really good job of, of, you know, cleaning things up the last few years. But, you know, that's still a, that's still a little scar that's going to hang around for a while. And they got to make sure that it's, it's one that fades and not one that, you know, gets, uh, gets cut back open because – but they can't afford to have anything else. Like they can't afford anything along these lines. Period. I mean, period. And the, so the basketball program overcame what was a horrible situation twenty years ago, right? Yeah. And or, or nearly twenty years ago, and they were able to overcome that. And it took forever. And even now, there are some things that are said. And the football program has now been dealing with this, and a lot of it because they've earned it. Uh, and, and this has been going uh, really since the Tevin Elliott trials as well. Uh, and, and then, of course, uh, the, the really flared up in 2015 and 2016. I'm in a weird spot because on the one hand, I'm like, I mean, it, it is for, I'm sure, a lot of fans, a day of celebration. And I feel not like celebrating, but I definitely feel like, oh, man, that's great news for the school that we cover on a more regular basis. Uh, but I am a little at the same time. It's like I can't like fist pump over it or anything you know no. what i mean because like clearly a lot of things were still going you know mm -hmm. and we knew that anyways but it's like it's just further affirmation so i mean i don't know how a lot of other people out there are reacting but don't get my my kind of just even mood on this as though i'm not like hey this is a great th piece of news for baylor it's just that yeah it is but at the same time as a result of what you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's like but yeah but as a result of some bad stuff so um that that part's kind of hard to shake but um, you know, repeating myself, but I'm sure there's just a massive amount of relief, uh, you know, across the street. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, I want to clarify this for some of you on the chat room. I, I And I understand some of your frustration if you like a program that's been hammered. I mean, even back to the days of the 80s with SMU or Missouri because of a rogue tutor or others who have been hit with the NCAA with penalties because of what are NCAA violations. You have every right to be frustrated, especially now because the name, image, and likeness is all but legalized, all of that. But you still have to understand, and we're about to hear from the chair of the uh, Committee of Infractions, even you could hear it in his voice, the frustration, even the obvious of what they saw, and yet what they are legally allowed to truly rule on. So even if you think there should be more, even if you wanted the death penalty or no bowls or scholarship reductions, whatever you may think, listen to why this was the penalty because you can bitch and moan. You can be upset. You can call Baylor whatever you want. You can sit there and say this is unfair. But if you are ever in the courtroom and you have something that's been accused of you, you've been accused of doing something, and you can get off because of a minor technicality or something that may not be a part of the legal system, that's the same thing. It's why we have the legal system, even if you don't like it. All right, here is the chairman of infractions. 254-339-1122. We'll come back with your calls uh, uh, after this, after this three, minute, it's three minutes. Uh, we will get into what the NCAA has said about former Baylor head coach Art Browse and what it might mean for him as well. But here is the comment from the committee, a committee of infractions. Up front, I will say that the panel found the allegations in this matter serious, troubling, and unacceptable. Sexual abuse and interpersonal violence are abhorrent, and our campus athletic programs must work to prevent and address this misconduct rather than shield student athletes who perpetrate it. The question before the panel was whether this alleged conduct was a violation of then existing NCAA rules, for which the panel would have authority to penalize conduct everyone agrees was improper. NCAA members have not adopted rules regulating how member schools should respond to sexual violence involving student athletes. Member schools have primary authority to investigate and address sexual and interpersonal violence on campus. When they fail in carrying out that responsibility, as Baylor did, there are legal 
governmental, and other regulatory processes to hold them accountable. But there are no NCA rules that allow the COI to adjudicate and penalize the school's response to sexual violence. The NCA does have bylaw 16, which forbids athletics departments from giving benefits to student athletes that are not available to the general student population. This case was charged under those rules. And we heard evidence to determine whether Baylor treated student athletes who were accused of sexual violence differently from how it treated non-student athletes. After hearing evidence, the panel concluded that Baylor had a campus-wide problem of addressing sexual violence. The former president of Baylor has described it as a colossal operational failure. We determined that this failure was not limited to the athletics department. Faculty and staff throughout campus did not know or understand their obligation to report allegations of sexual and interpersonal violence. As a result, we reluctantly concluded that the failure to report and address incidents of sexual violence was not a violation of bylaw 16. To be clear, the panel does not believe that excuses the conduct at the heart of this case. The authority to, to hold wrongdoers accountable remains vested at the campus level. Baylor has undergone a separate investigation of its institutional response to sexual violence and took action to hold responsible persons accountable according to the evidence presented. And, as noted in the decision, there are other avenues, including the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights and other state and local law enforcement entities, as well as ongoing litigation, through which this issue is being addressed. All right, so that is why they could only rule on whatever they did. It may frustrate you, it may not make sense to you, but this is the black and white of the NCAA. Will they at some point, in fact, Dr. Livingstone is gonna be a part of that, uh, uh, whatever that the committee that uh, was formed that she's gonna be a part of. And by the way, if you watched her today, she and Mac Rose, if you watched Dr. Livingstone today, and Mac was great too, but you could tell she was crushing it today. And that's why she's been invited to be a part of it. I think that she now has been through this, has seen what it does to a campus, the ins and outs of it, the, 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 the repercussions. And now I think you'll see someone like that be an advocate for tr trying to it maybe include more of this at some point. How, what does this do to Title IX, Paul? Well, Nothing. 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 I mean, it it, it yeah, still I mean. is. You still wonder about the legalities of of uh, uh, on campus. I know. I, I I understand people disagree with this. A political ball too, but uh, this is also a part of sometimes the argument about Title IX when it comes to a sexual assault on the campus, a legal system issue. Baylor's, you know, the five thousand dollars. My God, they should have been fined millions. Remember, there's that money the Big Twelve has withheld from them for five years, which should be open and returned to them this fall according to Bob Bowlesby, Big 12 commissioner. There have been millions of dollars that they have also paid in, in various lawsuits. And, oh, by the way, yeah, to make some of them go away. And there may be more and more and more. Uh, today uh, was a good day as far as the future of Baylor, uh, although, again, we will say that word a lot surreal today as well. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I mean, yeah, they paid a lot of money and all. The, I don't know. What, were you, what was your point with that? Oh, uh, there was a lot. Why won't they pay? I was asked today on a radio segment. Why don't they pay like a $5 million fine? I don't know, because they didn't fine them $5 million. They, That's they why. I mean, them, yeah, I mean, it, what kind of dumb question is that? I don't know. I mean, nobody, I mean you got to ask the NCAA that question. Um, yeah, why didn't they fine them a billion dollars? Same reason. Um, I mean, people can, can complain about what it should have been and, and this and that, and I understand that, but... Uh, bottom line is none of that matters because the decision's out. So you can say whatever you want to or feel however you want to, but the decision's out. So it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about it, what it should have been, what it could have been, what it might have been. It is what it is now. And so that's what we can work off of. I'm not too interested in, in what they should have done, but you've at least tried to outline why they did do what they did. And it's because you know, quite honestly, we brought this up over the last few years, and I know Paul was really hammering this. You know, for the last couple of years, it's, five years ago, this six was years ago, yeah, not an NCAA thing. It was, you know, it just it never was, and the only way that it was going to be was if you know that was somehow leading to like, 
like you had Art Bryles in the the dark of night, like covering up his starting quarterback's transgressions, and then him turning around and playing Texas the next day. Like none of that was happening. There were obviously there were issues that were happening, but I, I think that so much of it got played up in the media that I still don't know how many people even know like exactly what really happened, and you know people's certain involvement in it and all of that. Uh, but, you know, regardless, uh, there were bad things that went on. Like we said, we never, ever said that that wasn't the case. It was just to what extent. And then that we didn't necessarily know. Um, and, and then the NCAA itself is just a wild card. So it actually seems as though they played it by the letter of the law and by the letter of their rule book. Didn't try to make a show or make a stance or, you know, appease social media. They just went by what they're supposed to go by. And they made a decision, and, and whether people like it or not, it doesn't really matter. It is a decision that was made the way it's supposed to, and that's why things are in place like that. So if you don't like the decision or how they came about it, well, then change the whole thing. But that is how it does operate, and this is what conclusion they came to. All right, uh, 